Salmon Skins, and welcome to this week's episode of Edwin Salmon of Knowledge, coming at you a little bit later than it normally would. But hey, that sometimes happens, you know, when you're supposed to do something and you put it off and then you have technical difficulties and then you have technical difficulties on another podcast that you do, whereby the original file that was recorded just disappears from the the PC. That's what happened from uh, Padraig Connolly's computer. Um, we should never have left it on PC's computer. No, uh, I did have some technical difficulties. I had some weird sound issues that I was trying to fix via my microphone and my recorder and my laptop interface. My other laptop, the workhorse, they call it, which is kind of a, a, a horrible thing, really, to, to think about actual workhorses. Because I always think when people say, oh, my workhorse laptop died. Is that what happens to workhorses? Like um, Boxer in Animal Farm, he just, well, obviously he represents, actually represents the workers Ooh, getting a bit political now, getting a bit political. So, um, yeah, my my other laptop, which I bought in 2008, I think, which predates a lot of the horribleness of the world, predates sort of podcasts and social media, the rise of social media, Star Wars Episode Nine, Rise of Social Media. Come now. Look at my tweets. Good, good. The Sith are retweeting my meme about the Jedi being idiots. Good, soon, soon all of my plans will come to fruition. And I will have a big, juicy, evil piece of fruit ripe for the eating. The Jedi, they cannot meme. You're wrong. You're wrong about the memes. We've got memes. We've got memes up the wazoo. Planet wazoo, where I come from. I may be just a simple, destined to be the savior of the universe, Jedi Knight. But you, sir, are a pain in the ass. Who writes this stuff? Anyway, Star Wars uh, is not coming back for a while. They've delayed the next Star Wars movie because the TV shows are doing so well. They said, fuck the movies. That's the official line from Lucasfilm. Fuck the movies. No, actually today, the or yesterday rather, or uh, a long time ago if you're listening to this in the future. Because if you're listening to this in the future and the show has already been shown on, on streaming, then everything I'm saying is moot and pointless. But this is a podcast about the right now. I can't go back, guys. I won't go back, and I can't go back. I didn't lay any uh, little sweets, any skittles. So like Hansel and Gretel, I'm just sort of fumbling through the forest, hoping uh, a, a witch who spent many, many years building a house made of sweets and gingerbread. Um, like, what's the story with that house? Surely that house would, would go off and get mouldy, and or just be eaten by a big pack of birds. I realise it's it's a flock of birds, 
So there'd be a flock of birds and a pack of wolves all happily munching on gingerbread walls and witches' giblets, which is uh, also a good name for a punk band. The Witches' Giblets, playing live tonight in Toronto, Canada. Get there if you can. So, yes, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series uh, had its first look sizzle reel, um, which is what they say when they release a video of a movie or a TV show that hasn't come out yet, and the director or the producer or one of the writers is there, and they're just cooking something in a frying pan, doing a little stir-fry, a little duck stir-fry. So Ewan McGregor was there, doing a little duck stir fry going, oh, I can't wait till you see the new Obi-Wan Kenobi series. It's going to be great. I I don't talk with my Scottish accent. Obviously, I do my Obi-Wan Kenobi voice, but I won't do it now because I've signed a contract and Disney own my Obi-Wan Kenobi voice. It's their intellectual property. And they actually own my regular voice as well. So when I do the sizzle reels, oh, hang on a second, I put some soy sauce in. Shh, oh, it's sizzling away nicely. When I do the sizzle reels, I have to do my Mrs. Doubtfire voice. Oh, you're going to love Phobie One, dear. It's got lightsabers and it's got all sorts of planets. And oh, it's got all the Star Wars things you know and love. And I'm fighting Vader again. Oh. He's a nasty one, isn't he? <laughs> He's very good at the memes. He did a meme of me talking to my friend Dexter, the four-armed alien who owns a diner and wears a grubby vest. And he said, "Oh, someone's been rubbing up the Jedi the wrong way. I don't know what he's insinuating by that. It's a very specific meme. If you haven't seen Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones... All the clones attack Jimmy clones, Bobby clones, Freddy clones, Margaret clones. Maggie clones is a fucking monster. Anyway, that's what he was talking about. Um, And they showed no footage of the actual show itself, even though it's shot and done. They showed concept art of what the show is going to be like. And it's not all going to be on Tatooine. They've aged Ewan McGregor a little bit as well because it's set 10 years after uh, The Revenge of the Sith. So Luke Skywalker is 10 years old and in the first movie, which is the fourth movie, if you catch my drift, the 1977 first Star Wars movie, episode four, it's so fucking confusing, Luke Skywalker, played by Mark Hamill, is like 19, I think, 19, 20. So he's like 10 years old in this one. Uh, So Ewan McGregor, a little bit grey, and then 10 years later, it's Alec Guinness. So I don't know if we're going to get a series. Obviously, this is set 10 years after, but is there going to be a series that traverses the timeline of him ageing really horribly over 10 years into quite an old man? Because Ian McGregor's only 50 now, but he you know, he still looks good. Which is why they have to kind of age him up to get him closer to Alec Guinness, who I wouldn't say had the same fitness regime as Ian McGregor. But having said that, he lived to the ripe old age of 90. I think he was like 90, 91. I'm not going to check it, even though the, all of that information is here at my fingertips. That would take the fun out of my podcast about knowledge where I don't know the knowledge and then subsequently don't look it up. Um, But it's funny, man. Uh, It's so funny to see these updates from movies like Spider-Man, No Way to Go Home, because the buses have gone. That's the plot that leaked. Spider-Man is out in Staten Island and he has to get the bus back but he's missed the last bus and he has to meet uh, Mary Jane for a milkshake and he can't make it back and he has to call her and say, 
I'm sorry I've missed the bus to Snow Way Home. Uh, I mean, like, he probably could just swing uh, on his webs and fly home pretty quick. But he's lost his powers. That's the thing. That's what Doctor Strange has taken away his powers because he doesn't want him spending all his money out in Staten Island uh, on, the, on, the, on the Dodgems. That's what leaked. So when he's going to meet... So the other two Spider-Men from uh, the previous movies, Tobey Maguire and uh, your man from Social Network, Andrew Garfield, uh, who's he's just sitting around eating lasagna, and Tobey Maguire is like gambling and not making movies, and they're like, come on, you got to be Spider-Man again. I don't, I did that years ago, says Tobey Maguire. How much? Okay, I'm there. So, yeah, no, the, 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 the set photos were him Tom Holland like walking in New York and they're like examining this and what does this mean and like there's so much like there's literally um like I was going to do a video I still might do it because I think it would be funny and I think the people who don't listen to this podcast but who kind of randomly sort of uh scroll through YouTube looking for nerdy videos because I like a nerdy video I put one up a while ago. Didn't get many views. That's fine. <laughs> I didn't do it for the views, guys. But I was doing it. But it was a fan. I had a fan theory because I'm a fan, a fan of the Bad Batch, uh, which is an animated show. And I had a theory about it because if you know, you know, there's a Boba Fett series that's coming on the 29th of December, streaming on Disney Plus, with the original actor who played. Django Fett and Boba Fett is a clone of Django Fett and uh, he's playing Boba Fett but in the Bad Batch there is a female clone who it, again it, like Boba Fett is an unaltered clone doesn't have any growth acceleration so uh, the female clone my theory is that that character is going to show up in live action maybe in the book of Boba Fett but probably not. That's my hot take. But I was trying to do, I was thinking of doing some videos that ape that kind of nerd. Hey guys, big news. Spider-Man's costume is slightly different. What could this mean for the movie? Nothing probably. It just means they want to sell more little figurines of Peter Parker. That's probably what it means. No, scratch that. That's definitely what it means. But there's such a cottage industry a tiny cottage where people make these videos and put them up. And some of them are very well done. I like Mr. Sunday Movies. Uh, I like a, I like a good nerdy analysis of stuff and pop culture and things. Things and da. Uh, that should be the name of my YouTube channel. Things and da. A culture's perspective on pop culture. But a lot of them are just, you know, they're stretching out Every like the, you can get into the minutia and the details, especially with stuff like Star Wars, where there's like so many characters and so many things to know and talk about and explore. And some of it is like, do we really need to know that? Like myself and my younger brother have this kind of ha- had this ongoing joke where we were we were talking about Star Wars Episode One, the Phantom Menace, and there's a character in it when they're on Tatooine and little. Uh, Anakin Skywalker is there and there's this old English lady who's in she must be in her she must be 74 if she's a day maybe 73 at a push but uh, she just says to Anakin she calls him Annie because uh, she's friends with him that's how you know it's good writing from George Lucas but she just like she just pipes up with um, storms coming Annie Biscuit inside. And she's clearing up her stall. She's like selling, you know, uh, alien seashells on a string uh, to, you know, dumb tourists. And uh, I looked it up and sure enough, there's videos about her. She has a name. She has a backstory. Her name's Jira. And the video I saw was like two minutes because quite frankly, what more can you say about her? And the video's like, Jira lives in Tatooine and sells junk and uh, tourist tat to idiot tourists. She's friends with Anakin. 
Like, yeah, that's it. She she literally has that one line in the movie. But now they're mining so much of this intellectual property for TV shows and whatnot. I want to do a fake video where uh, I'm breaking some Star Wars casting news for a new Star Wars show where uh, Jira, the series, a six-part special event, George Lucas is coming back to direct Jira. Uh, it's all a prequel series about a young Jira who's going to be played by um, Kate Winslet, hot off the heels of her success on Mayor of Easttown, staying in prestige television. It's going to explore where she came from, how she came to live in the desert and sell, you know, alien seashells on, you know, fucking, uh, what's it called? Floss, that's it, alien floss. God, it took me a long time to think of floss. Let's have some fucking rapping and then we'll go into a break and I'll come back with more shit that's not about Star Wars. Oh, yeah, I was over there. I was sitting on the chair. I didn't have any hair, so I went off to France. I bought a syrup by chance. Then I went for a dance and then the girl said, how about it? Except she said it in French I didn't know what she was saying I asked my friend to translate But he was too drunk, I was late The woman left the club, I ran after her But I fell down the stairs of the Champs-Élysées I climbed the Eiffel Tower Hoping that I'd get a flower Give to her, but I never saw her again and we're back. Thanks very much for sticking with that improvised rap. Now, I did improvise the main part, and then I put some little samples uh, over it. So it might seem a bit more polished than you might expect from an improvised rap off the top of my head. But think about it this way, guys. Does the Champs-Élysées have steps? No. It doesn't. It's a monument that doesn't have any steps. You have to go down steps to get to it because it's slap bang in the middle of a roundabout, which confused me the first time I saw it. And I say the, I say the first time, the first and only time I saw it. I was in Paris once for like five days, six days. And when I saw the Champs-Élysées, I thought, how do I get out there? How do we do uh, What? Huh? You have to run because the traffic doesn't stop. There's no traffic lights. And then it's, we didn't go out to the center because I didn't want to be in the middle of this thing with loads of French people driving around, honking their horns, going, bip, bip. Um, so, guys, thanks so much for coming back. Some of you regular listeners will know that I am a father. Luke is almost six months now. Six months old, which is crazy. He's starting to eat food that's not in milk form and doesn't come from a bottle or a breast. And we've given him sweet potato, which he was sort of like, yeah, yeah. And then we gave him what can be best described as a sort of a banana porridge. You know, powder stuff, you mix it with water. Now, he seemed to like that. And then we've also been giving him this sort of uh, puree, which is like, you know, avocado, kiwi, a little dash of lemon. We haven't done that thing that, you know, it's like a popular thing where you shove a lemon in a baby's face and, you know, record the reactions and then put it online for people to go, ah, or who, or hmm. You know, there's there's lots of uh, various noises and various different reactions that people have. So yeah, he was eating a bunch of um, the green sort of smudge. It kind of looks like, kind of like snot, but like the sort of snot you'd see off a sort of a Jim Henson puppet in a fantasy movie, that kind of snot, as in it's not actual real snot, but he threw a little bit of it up on his on his sleeve. Um, but he's very happy. He's happy out. He's gaining weight. Um, we're going to enter him in the baby UFC. Two babies enter. They crawl towards each other slowly, and finally, 
something happens. But uh, we have been going to swimming lessons, which is one of the things we do. We do clap handies, of course, on Thursdays, uh, which is a wonderfully exclusive club run by an incredibly charismatic man called Tyler Durden. And the first and second rules of clap handies are you cannot talk about clap handies. Third rule is have fun with it, guys. Fourth rule is sing a song and sing along. Fifth rule is uh, no bibs, no bouncers. Uh, seventh rule is if it's your first time at Clap Handies, you have to Clap Handies. I've been doing this, bit, some of this as stand-up bits because, you know, i got to mine my own life experience. And I'm hoping that stand-up continues. Sidebar, I'm hoping that stand-up continues. The cases today were like 5,000 cases. So I don't know what's going to happen. I know Neffet, the uh, uh, advisory body to the government, is suggesting that people in high-risk jobs, such as going to pubs in small rooms and talking to people for various amounts of money, um, have to be tested all the time, every day, or twice a week or something. I don't know. Like, I did a test. I did the up-the-nostril test there last week because Cara thought she was feeling a bit run down, and we did it just to be on the safe side. We both taste, tasted <laughs> we both tasted negative. I licked her, and she licked me, and we both went, mm, yes, I'm getting. I'm not getting a very positive flavour getting an extremely negative flavor and now it seems that i don't think there's going to be another lockdown i think i think there'd be riots in the street quite frankly if there was another lockdown even suggested i don't know what's going to happen i just know that it's as bad as it's ever been yet everywhere is open and from what i've seen just being in clubs, and obviously I, I take great care and wear my mask uh, whenever I'm not performing. But it is difficult to uh, police all of this stuff because no one really knows what they're doing. And there's no actual, you know, there's no guards going around checking restaurants. And some places I've been to take your name, your number, want to see your COVID thing, scan it in. Other places will say, have you got, you're vaccinated, yeah? And they just sort of take your word for it. And I'm kind of like, hey, hang on a minute, guys. Um, check. So hopefully, hopefully things won't go back to the way they were. Because it's nice for Luke to see other babies. Like, he's such a people watcher. He hates being on his tummy for tummy time. But he has to because he's got to learn how to creep and then crawl. So he can become a creepy crawly. But he was lying on his stomach, uh, on his tummy rather. Because when you're that young, you have to say tummy. Uh, Because when you get older, you can't say, oh, I've got a sore tummy. Because people think, what? You're not a child. You you have a stomach. You're a grown man. Grown men don't have tummies. You sad man. But he was watching everyone come in. And he sees his head turning, just watching everyone. And the same in the swimming, although he gets a little bit sort of cry uh, towards the end of the swimming. And regular listeners will know about my beef with Geraldine. Um, That's her real name. I'm not saying where I'm going swimming, so there's that. And I don't think that she is going to be listening to this podcast. It would be incredibly uh, bad if she did. But look, to be honest, I said it out out loud to her face in front of everyone the first time because when I went in you get these underwater underwater um they're not underwater nappies there's these nappies that are all you have to dive down and chase them they're kind of like uh you know um starfish but they're but they're nappies they're waterproof nappies now I wouldn't say they're a hundred percent waterproof I would say they're water resistant they're basically there to stop pee and poo getting out so I made the mistake of keeping his regular nappy on because I've never done this before. I mean, I don't even know how to swim. I can barely float. And I went in and obviously the nappy filled up and it weighed, 
it was he was quite heavy and she was like she basically said it in front of she was like <laughs> she said it to me like oh you normally you wouldn't you know you'd not put the actual nappy on leave the actual nappy on and put the thing over you just take the nappy off and just use this and i was like oh, all right thanks very much and then she basically turned around to everyone you have to leave the nappy on the child fucking eat it more or less she didn't call me a fucking idiot and i just went geraldine don't shame me in front of the parents and i was a little bit peeved and then the following week uh she said that i i took luke out of the water too quickly and i was like yeah i wasn't you weren't even there um not that i take don't take criticism but she always seems to find something and then all of a sudden one week and I blame Geraldine for this one, just because she's kind of become, I don't have it, I was going to say she's kind of become my semi-nemesis, my part-time nemesis. It's not a full-time job, it's just a part-time, just, you know, just on Mondays, uh, she she's my nemesis. And uh, I was all set to go, and it was the Friday, got an email, got a missed call and got a message, and got an email from the name of the centre redacted for swimming and it said that it's been cancelled the swimming for toddlers and babies has been cancelled because the pool temperature is too cold something went wrong with the the pool temperature now it was a bank holiday weekend so i think someone i'm not saying who geraldine basically threw a spanner or threw some salt in the machine or did something and the temperature's too cold. I, I, I think maybe the people working there, I mean, the place was still open, but the class was not on. So I think Geraldine was probably on the lash and was like, oh, jeez. Or because it was the Friday, she was kind of like, I think I'll, uh, she rang up, I'm going to go on a bender, lads. So cancel that Monday morning um, thing. And then this Monday, when myself and the other parents went in, and got got changed and all that sort of stuff, and we all got into the the section of the pool that's reserved for babies. It's got a waterproof velvet rope, and uh, a little merman takes it off. Oh, good to see you again, sir! And taps his little merman hat, and I say, "Thank you, Philippe." He's a French merman. He goes, uh, "I am l'homme et un poisson at the same time." And I say, yeah, that's lovely. And it's, we kind of have an awkward exchange. He, Philippe, the merman, is, he's, he's tried friending me on Facebook. I say, friend me on Facebook, because I don't really use Facebook anymore. Uh, but I do sometimes. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. But Instagram is probably better. But anyway, listen, uh, we all got in the pool. And immediately, we were like, hmm, like I, I looked over at some of the other mothers. Now, sometimes there's dads, but most of the time it's just mothers and uh, very few fathers. And it felt cold. Straight away, it felt cold. And one of the mothers vocalized this by using her words and said, oh, it's kind of cold. Uh, but before she'd even got to say that, Geraldine straight away was like, now, lovely and warm, lovely warm water. And it seemed like she was trying to sort of Jedi mind trick us into believing that the water that we were all in was warmer than it actually was. And I looked over at one of the mothers and both of us gave, a, gave a, each other sort of a, no, that's bullshit. I was like, don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining, Geraldine. Um, she didn't do that. But we had the, we had the swimmies and... Luke's come along. He's actually starting to kick his legs a little bit more. And it makes sense that he is learning to swim less than six months after he was swimming inside Kara for nine months. Whereas I've never swam and avoid water at all costs. And it took me 43 years to even get to a stage where I was like, you know what? I might want to go and swim. My name is Philip and I am a Norman. I live in the deep of the ocean, but sometimes I come up to swim with the humans and I am French. 
So, guys, uh, bad news about my mouth. I know some of you have been asking about my teeth. And I, you know, I still have a lot of my original teeth. Um, it sounds like I'm selling my teeth online and I'm trying to track down these kind of eccentric billionaires who buy strangers' teeth and then sell them back at a profit. It's a profit game, the tooth game, the black market tooth game. But, uh, you know, black teeth don't sell as well as shiny white ones. No, what happened was I've been to the dentist. I got a couple of teeth pulled that I needed to get pulled. And one of them was in my bottom uh, bottom jaw, bottom jaw, bottom row on the right hand side uh, at the very back. And it was yanked out at a mild expense. And then it kept getting stuff, kept getting stuck in there, seeds. And then there were tiny, tiny little rabbits that were going in after the seeds. And then I had to get them out. I had to, I had to hire a tiny farmer with a gun to go in and shoot them all. It was a whole thing, guys. It was an absolute disgrace and a mess. But what happened was, when that tooth was pulled, it did something to my gums and it did something to the rest of the teeth in my head. But basically what happened was, I had all my wisdom teeth pulled out before. So no one really is stupid. And one of the uh, teeth that I had pulled was on the bottom right where the tooth I had pulled recently was. Now, I had this tooth pulled 10 years ago, probably. I was in college. I don't remember this dentist. Uh, I remember one dentist I had because she was young. And I remember she was like, she'd look in a book when she had to, because I had like a, a gum infection, which was quite painful. And she looked in a book to prescribe me some antibiotics and I thought that was very good that she was actually looking in a book and not just sort of going off the top of her head going ah this because you can't have the same antibiotics uh you know twice in quick succession and I had previously had gum problems on the other side anyway this dentist only sticks out in my mind because she was young and when I was in the chair she would walk behind me and her breasts would brush against my bald head now i don't know if she was doing this on purpose guys i don't know if she was trying to offset the horribleness and stress and oftentimes pain of being in a dentist by giving me a nice little sensation of her breasts on my head you know look i didn't say anything she didn't say anything but she knew what she was doing like these days she would be cancelled along with everyone else. I mean, it's mainly people in the media who are being cancelled, but I say I'm going to track her down. I mean, at the time, if Twitter had been a thing, looks like I say this was like 10, 12 years ago, I, you know, I would have been... So, guys, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I was in the dentist today, and she invaded my personal space, and then she'd be cancelled, and then she'd have to do a round of media interviews apologizing for her actions and saying she just wants to get back to pulling bone out of people's skulls because that's what she loves to do. And then there'd be like reports of her. She's making a comeback. She's done a few mild extractions in Longford. She's moving her way up to the big city. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. She was actually, she was a good dentist. And, you know, I got, you know, I was a single lonely man at the time. So I appreciated the... Um, uh, the breasts on my head. Breasts on my head. When I'm having teeth pulled out of it. Um, I mean, they, they say... Who's they? The wizards. They say... Uh, I think there are statistics to match to match this. And to... Uh, you know, make this not just some fucking nonsense out of my brain that I want to believe is true. But the highest rates of suicide in America are dentists and when you think about it that kind of makes sense because you know if your job is you know oh i want to pull bone out of people's skull you know you're already starting from a strange place so um 
now I'm cancelled. But here's the thing. It wasn't that dentist. It was another dentist who, like, I had a tooth pulled, a wisdom tooth pulled, whereby the dentist assistant had to hold my head and he yanked it out. And the whole the whole tooth came out, you know, and wisdom teeth have deep roots. And I realize this now because what happened recently when I had that tooth pulled, it uh, I could feel something where the wisdom tooth would have been. I can feel it now, I'm tonguing it now. And my gum was a little bit tender and I was like, what the hell's going on? So I rang my dentist and she said, come in, have a look at it. She took a little x-ray and she went, right, so what happened, what, what's going on there is that's the root of an old wisdom tooth. And then suddenly I had a flashback, wow, 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 wow. And I remembered that when that dentist pulled that tooth out, just the crown of the tooth came which is technical term, guys, for the top of the tooth. Just the tooth topper came out, but the, the grounding of the tooth, or the root, as it's also known, I just made up that word, grounding, um, was still there. And I remember at the time going, you know, with in my ha- in my numbed state, in my mouth going, it's not okay. And she said, yeah, it should be fine. Should be fine. And I thought, right. So, well, what happens is the gum will just grow over it and it'll be fine. But what's happened now is that because the gum has been disturbed, it's coming up to the surface. And she took the x-ray and she said on the bottom, there's a bit of a shadow on the root. So sooner or later, that's going to be a problem and that's going to be quite painful. So you're going to have to have that removed. I was like, oh, another extraction. And she was like, well, I actually can't do it here. I'll have to refer you to an oral surgeon because they're going to have to cut your gum and remove some of the bone in your jaw. Goodbye. I went, what? So I have to have my gums cut open. And, you know, I'm and the thing is, I'm not going to be knocked out for it. I'm going to be sedated. And I've had plenty of colonoscopies. (laughs) Believe you me, guys, I've had I've had my fair share of colonoscopies. And again, they just, they don't give you general anesthetic. They sedate you. And I don't remember, so you're awake, but I don't remember anything from any of my colonoscopies. And I'm awake, but I must be just sort of talking. I'm always nervous that I'm going to just reveal some deep, dark secrets. And uh, they get a big laugh out of it. Um, But... I'm not looking forward to it. I'm going to do it in January because it's a depressing month anyway. And hopefully I won't get very painful gum infection before that happens. But, you know, it's like, when do you, it's going to cost me a couple of hundred quid. So I don't know. Thanks for listening to this podcast, guys. You're giving me an incremental amount of uh, money by doing that. So, um... I'm going to I'm going to leave you guys with uh, a little tale from my stand up days because I've been doing a lot of stand up I'm actually going to I'm actually is what I said I'm actually going to uh, put up a little bit of stand up from a recent gig I did last Sunday the 7th of Nov 2021 uh, one of my favorite comedy clubs uh, the Comedy Crunch in the Stag's Head pub basement came back after 19 months and I headlined their first show back, which was great. And um, like I've had a few hecklers in some of the gigs that I've done. I did a gig on Wednesday night and there was these guys from London who were like throwing signs, gang signs and all sorts of shit and just vaping in the back and all three of them were dressed identically. So I just sort of pulled the piss out of England a little bit, which you'll hear in this this little clip that I'm going to put up. And uh, at one stage, I kind of, because I like to kind of, I don't want to cross a line where I'm going, where I'm almost going like, fuck you. I think it can be very clear and people are very perceptive. And I've seen comedians who have kind of crossed, not crossed the line, but in their head, I know that they're going, Fuck you. I will kill you. Uh, I will follow you home and kill you. And there's a little bit of venom. There's a little bit of 
spite and a little bit of anger and blood in the water. Um, what am I saying? But these guys, they weren't doing friendly heckles. Like sometimes you can get friendly heckles or freckles, as I call them, where people uh, will shout at something encouraging or say something that's kind of funny and you can kind of riff on it. But these guys were just repeating words that I was saying, just random words. I'd say something at the end of a sentence and they'd repeat the word. And, you know, that kind of destroys the rhythm uh, of what you're doing. And it's all about rhythm and language, uh, joke telling. And I just said, I said, I'd call you a parrot, but parrots are more intelligent, something like that. It was a terrible uh, comeback to a heckle. But guys, I haven't been doing it for a couple of years. And, you know, I'm only just getting back to it. So I'm maybe a little bit rusty. But the gig I had, which I will be putting uh, up here very shortly. Uh, now, incidentally, if you want to hear the gig in its entirety, it's 30 minutes. I'm going to put up, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Uh, if you go to my Patreon, Edwin Salmon of Knowledge, on Patreon and become a patron for five euro a month, which is cheaper than a pint of Guinness these days, because the pint of Guinness I had on Wednesday night was six euros and 86 cent. Where, why the 86? Why six? Just cap it at 80. Six euro 80. Now, in fairness to it, it was the best pint of Guinness I've ever had in my life. No, it was fine, but that's way too much. Way too much money. So for less than that, for a fiver a month, you get live gigs like the one I've just put up. It's a full half hour. There's a bit of a a, a preamble and a postamble, and some of the some of the postamble I'm talking about uh, hecklers. And there was a woman at the gig, who you if you listen to the full thing on on my page, become a patron. Uh, there's other stuff there. There's extra podcasts. I do an extra podcast every week. There's video pods. There's some of my book. Uh, well, there's like 30,000 words of my book if you want to read it. And there's some uh, other little extra bits and pieces of conversations from uh, myself and my friend Trevor Brown. So this woman who I asked, does anyone have kids? Because I was doing stuff about Luke. And she said she's like a 24-year-old and a 2-year-old. And I was like, oh my God. And it, it was a little bit awkward. But then afterwards, she did this thing where everyone had left and I was helping uh, Colm, who runs the club and it was emceeing, I was helping him take down the backdrop or whatever because they're normally they do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but they're only doing Sundays, I think, up until Christmas just to see how things go. And with cases in the 5,000s, who knows how things are going to go. And I, we were taking down the backdrop and Iwan was there leaving with her, her fella, and she's the same age as me, it transpired. But she, she started doing this thing where, and it happens sometimes where, you know, and uh, she she did kind of a north side accent. And she was just started going, oh, yeah, look, look at you. Yeah, big man off the teddy. Yeah, which are, you got a big ego, don't you? Yeah, I think you're great. And I was like, uh, huh? You know, I was like, what? No, I really don't. <laughs> you know, and if, if I had an ego... I just fucking take my money and leave and say, I oh, take down the backdrop yourself, Colm. I'm out of here. And we're like, we were just chatting, taking down the thing. I was asking him about uh, Sarah, his wife. Hi, Sarah, if you're listening. I know Sarah's a big fan of Reviewables. I don't know if you listen to this podcast, but hi, how are you? I hope you're keeping well. Uh, I hope to see you soon. But she was like, ah, oh, yeah, big man. But she was doing it in that kind of way where it was halfway between a sort of a ribbon, sort of jokey, but there was a little bit of venom in it as well. It was a little bit too serious. And I think she was trying to get a kind of rise out of me or something. And I was just like, all right, that's that's what you think. Um, You know, she doesn't know the fucking reality of my life and auditioning for ads that you don't get and pitching TV shows that don't get made. And, you know, like every fucking p bit of money I'm I'm saving because I got a baby and I got a wedding. And, you know, like I'm not a fucking, I'm not Ryan Terbridey. 
driving around in a limo with champagne jacuzzis installed in the back. You know, I just, but she, I don't like it when people do that kind of thing where it's kind of like, it's a sort of a fuck you, but it's in in this grey area of ah, I'm only having a laugh kind of thing. I fucking hate that shit. Cause it, and then when she left, she was like all friendly. I think she it was almost like she was testing me or something. I don't know. So anyway, listen, I'm going to leave you uh, with this, which is a short bit of new material that I will be working into my uh, full hour plus show that I am performing in Galway City in the Roisin Dove on the 28th of this month, which is a Sunday. So if you want to buy tickets for that, hopefully it won't be cancelled. Uh, well, or I mean, it'll be postponed, not cancelled. So that is Edwin Salmon, Come Here to Me is the name of the show, uh, in the Roisin Dove on the 20th of November. I'm also in MVP, uh, in lower clan Bla- clan brassel street it's very hard to say that clan brassel and i am doing a gig on the 26th of november friday with a whole plethora of of stars uh myself emma dorn tony cantwell fred cook uh and more colin mcdonald i can't remember the rest and barry murphy and it's a fundraiser there's amazing raffle prizes uh, if you look look uh, up Stand Up to Hunger, go on my Instagram. I've I, I've posted about it, and uh, I'll put a link in the description. So you can enter the raffle without actually going to the gig. And there's wonderful raffle prizes. There's like Zig and Zag memorabilia signed by Zig and Zag, a Dustin, uh, the Turkey presidential campaign poster signed by the Turkey himself. There's an original Don Conroy artwork which is rare and, uh, you know, and when he dies, it'll only increase in value. Uh, but, you know, keep keep doing your thing, Don. We love you, Donnie. Uh, so that that's going to be fun. It's in Liberty Hall Theatre. You can buy tickets. There are tickets still available for the actual gig. But like I said, you can just buy a ticket for the raffle. And included in the raffle is tickets to loads of Vicar Street gigs, uh, podcast, Headstuff Podcast Studio, voucher so you can do what i do only in a more professional setting so guys uh that is the end of the episode and i will just say thanks very much for listening this far i hope you enjoy the um stand-up that you're about to hear and like i say if you want to hear more go to edwin salmon of knowledge on patreon and become a patron and you will get lots more. There's some video stand-up sets coming soon. I'm just waiting for uh, someone to send them to me because I did a series of gigs in uh, a venue in Dublin that were recorded, so I'm just waiting to get those back. So uh, they will go up very soon. So, guys, thank you so much, and I will talk to you later. Bye, 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 bye. Here we go with the show. Here is a bit of stand up that I did before, and here it is. How much time have we got left? I have no idea. <laughs> Two minutes, I'll do seven. I. Jesus Christ. Um, so, I mean, I think Trump is right now. Um, <laughs> We have some English people, an English friend at the back. I think you could be the only English person here. Any other English people who want to out themselves right now? <laughs> Bring them in, get them, guys! Oh yeah, sorry. I forgot, you're from Newcastle. Yeah, I'm from Newcastle. Um, I'm from Newcastle, man. See, this is what I, like, I don't understand the whole English thing because English people, even though, like Irish people, we have this weird chip on our shoulder because of 800 years of oppression, which is a nice round number. So you gotta, <laughs> you gotta take the positives where you can, you know? But much like a round chewy Malteser that hides in a bag of regular Maltesers, like a little fucking prick. Secret agent Malteser, and you pick it up and you're like, this is gonna be the same crunchy Malty treat I've enjoyed all these years. And you go, oh no, I don't like this. But I'll tolerate it for 800 years. 
Because we're a bunch of fucking idiots. Like we just we we won't complain. That's how England took us over. I think because we just won't complain about anything. So like the English came came over here and like they're, they're taking over our, our manners and our parking their horses and carts on our lawns and lads running. Fuck Bernard, some English lads have taken off your manor, and we just responded as a nation like this. Has he now? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'll certainly think about saying something to him. Oh God, no, geez, I wouldn't say it now. I don't want to disturb him while he's getting settled. I'll just, I'll go live in this tree house for a number of years. He'll probably die before me. And English people, like, I don't understand it because a couple of weeks ago I was on a bus and there was two English people on the bus and they were talking to each other, chat because my headphones died, so I had to listen to their stupid conversation. <laughs> and they were chatting to each other, and it became clear to me that I, I don't think they'd ever been on a fucking bus before. <laughs> and there's a man and a woman who's got, oh, they've got, you ring, you push the button for the bell, and then uh, they get, you get off it, you stop. Oh, that's quite clever, that is. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And then she was like, oh, and the sign that says the street name, and then the, that's how you know that your street's coming up. I said, what the fuck? And then I was just a roadworks sign, I'm probably doing roadworks. Oh, you think? And there's, oh, yeah, there's a smell tar, yeah, you're definitely doing roadworks. And I was like, how the fuck did you take over the world? Just show up in fucking countries. Hello, I'm Nigel. I'm from Acquisitions. Would you mind awfully if we had India, please? Oh, of course. <laughs> You're so polite. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just marriage. Um, but guys, it is. Look, it's wonderful. I, 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 I love doing this job. It's been uh, horrendous uh, not doing it for a while. And I love one reason. I love to go back to my favorite topic of drugs. <laughs> I do love this job because it's the one job where I can drink on the job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alcohol. But it's, like, I can drink on this job because yeah, no one gets nervous because I'm not flying a plane. You know, that would be, you don't want to be wherever you're, if you're flying back, I, you know, you don't want to be sitting on the runway and the, you know, the pilot comes on the intercom. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Fuck, he's up for today. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna lie to you five people on the plane. I had a few last night. <laughs> and a couple this morning, just a candle shakes. <laughs> My co-pilot, Philip, is a young man who uh, hasn't much experience. I think you're ready for it, Philip. I think you're ready to take on this big bird. Don't look at me like that, you little bitch. <laughs> You're a good man. You're a good young man. What? You're two years older than me? Shut up, will you? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be 30,000 feet up in the sky in what is essentially a big metal tube. How does it stay up here? No idea. Magic, that's my guess. Magic or the collective will of everyone on board this plane today. You better believe we can fly, guys. Or I believe I can fly. Was problematic. What are you talking about? Fuck you, Phil. I fucking piss in your face. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a selection of soup and sandwiches today. Or we have my own personal invention, a soup sandwich. A hollowed out loaf of bread full of soup. You eat the delicious soup and then you munch on the mushy bread. I'm, 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 I'm. Good for what else, yeah? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for entering your airplane. We realize you have a choice when you choose an airplane, and we oh, you obviously chose this airplane because it was the cheapest flight you could get on Skyscanner at 3 o'clock in the morning when you decided, fuck it! I'll go to the wedding in Lisbon! But they better stick together. I'm not going to some divorce party in Marbella. <laughs> Bing bong! So, anyway, uh, I hope that doesn't happen. Thanks, that's the first time the, the word anyway has gotten a laugh. <laughs> Comedians use it a lot, but up till tonight, they're never gonna laugh. So guys, my name uh, is Edwin Salmon and will continue to be. You can follow me on uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, I do podcasts. You can follow me on the street um, <laughs> if you want. But stay downwind of me because I have the nose of a human man. And that's the kind of weird joke I like to end up. Thanks very much, guys. See you again. Bye-bye.